Uh. It's the new Red Dream Show! to apologize for there, Harold. I got a great show for you today, and this is just a hint at what's coming up in Handyman Corner. Industrial strength diapers. <laughs> no, no, Harold, I call this the winchy. It's idiot proof. Here, prove it. <laughs> See up button there. Hey, you got one of these babies in your house, you get things down off a high shelf, you know, no problem. Don't need a ladder. Don't need a step stool. Get cheesies off the fridge. Get your hat off the antlers. Get your overserved sister-in-law down off the chandelier. Whatever it takes, you're there. All right, Harold, let me down. Way to go, Harold. You blew a fuse. You pushed the button too hard. No, I didn't. No, it's not a fuse. It's a, the power is out all the way down to the lake. Here, look. Out a mathematical problem. Of course, Harold is of no use whatsoever. Although he does make a pretty good burn up on a, you'll find out later. And I'm going to show you how to do some soldering as my salute to heavy metal. Yeah, well, you have a nice day too. <laughs> well, I complained to the power company. Let them know what I thought of the bad service they've been giving us. Well, maybe it has something to do with all the bad checks you've been giving them. <laughs> no, it doesn't, Harold. Power is the COD business, all right? They don't get my C till I get their D. <laughs> See, when they put the power in here, they just didn't anticipate the requirements of a handyman such as myself. I like things that hum when you turn them on. <laughs> yeah, right. I, you know, I heard they're going to put a transformer tower on the far side of Possum Lake. That ought to solve it for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Ah, oh, what? Yeah, that, tra that transformer tower is going to bring in so much electricity, we'll be bouncing checks right into the next millennium. <laughs> yeah, okay, but they're going to stick it right in the middle of Possum Park. You know, that's, that's like right between the bog and the, and the garbage fire. That's where all the adults sit to watch the bull races, so now we've got to watch Possum Lake bull races, like cowering under this metal monstrosity. Got an idea here, Harold. Uh-oh. Why don't we make the transformer tower serve double duty? You know, not only bring 50,000 volts into the area, but we can use it as a vertical grandstand. <laughs> a a, a, bird, a bird, what? A bird. Vertical grandstand. People can sit on it, Harold. Oh. Right? That's the trouble with your generation. Huh? You got no entrepreneurial spirit. If you look hard enough, Harold, you'll see an opportunity staring you right in the face. Yeah, but why does it always have a hood over its head and a scythe in its hand? <laughs> Well, unbeknownst to me, Bill had heard about our idea for the vertical grandstand, so he got himself some of these model rockets as a way of serving refreshments up to the people sitting way up in the rafters there. Kind of a hobby thing and a space program all combined. So he's got uh, the wires hooked up to the rocket. They start with electricity. Oh, 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 she's falling over. She's on an angle there, Bill. You might, Bill, she's on an angle. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Oh, that's how that works. Now I'm in the van. What they live rock? Boy, oh boy, that reminds me of a couple of dates I had in high school. No, no, no. Thank you, Bill. You've added a rocket. Wow. Bill's program is kind of like NASA. Well, not quite the same, but it rhymes. What's he doing? Oh, okay. oh, stand back, stand back, stand back, stand back, stand back, stand back. <laughs> All clear. Bill will be back a little bit later in the show with a couple more rockets and a lot more trouble. <laughs> Well, here we are with Hap Shaughnessy. We're all set to play our Possum Lodge word game. What is our prize today, Hap? Red, the grand prize is a pair of ear flaps from Raymond's House of Rubber. <laughs> well, certainly a good prize. Uh, Harold, give me the word there. All right, don't look at this, Hap, now. I'll tell the people at home what it says. All right, and I got 30 seconds to get you to say this. All right, here we go. Somebody who makes up stories. Author. <laughs> no, uh, Ernest Hemingway and I... Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, someone who tells falsehoods. Politician. <laughs> when, I, when I was Charles de Gaulle's no. bodyguard. No, 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 no. A person who bends the truth. Secret agent. No. I was, I was down in Algeria. No, 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 I know, I got it, I got it, I got it. Hap Shaughnessy, you are a... Um, 
<laughs> Deep sea diver, no, no. astronaut, no, no. Uh, sumo wrestler, <laughs> inventor. Okay, inventor, yes, okay, okay, because you invent stories, so that uh, makes you a... Uh... Broadway playwright. What? Oh, that was years ago. I haven't written a hit musical in years. <laughs> All right, Hot, say somebody says that you never were an astronaut or a sumo wrestler, you never were a playwright, that person is a... Oh, the liar. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, do you know the worst liar I ever met? No. Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> she swore yeah. that she wouldn't fall for me. Said it was only going to be a sexual relationship. Uh -huh. But oh, no. <laughs> oh, fruit, 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 fruit. Nature's way of making things scoot. Fun to eat and fun to throw. But if you toss them, here's something to know. I had an experience down by the beach. I nailed a guy with a rotten peach. He was a full-figured man. He could really hit. So if you were predisposed to throwing peaches, I would make sure that you, first of all, remove the pit. <laughs> well, with my idea to build this uh, vertical grandstand, we're going to have to attach aluminum lawn chairs to the steel transmission tower. So I thought I'd take this uh, handyman corner and show you how to bond metal to metal. I want you just to imagine that this is the transmission tower, and imagine that this is a lawn chair. <laughs> All right, now what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna start that up, uh, one of these uh, soldering torches. Yes, we're gonna solder this whole thing together. You know, solder's a strange word. You don't pronounce the L, you just say solder. If you say solder, the clerks are gonna stay away from you in, in droves. All right, so it's, it's, called, it's called a silent L, whereas you get a word like help. You know, you wanna pronounce the L there. Hep, hep, see, nobody comes. And don't confuse the two. All right, now what you want to do is you just want to heat up the metal there, get them both good and hot. I recommend you use a torch, but I suppose you can use a stove, or if you're real fast, you can use an explosion. <laughs> All right, that's good. Now you get some of this flux, and you want to put that on there. It kind of cleans the thing there, and you can, you can just put it on with your fingers. <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> All right, now uh, just get your solder, and uh, you want to heat that up, put that solder in there, that the metals become one thing, all joined together. And don't be shy, just lay the solder in there. Ah, uh, hold her. Hap, hap, I'm covered in solder. Hey. Nobody comes. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, solder's not all that strong, but if you sock enough on there, she ought to hold. <laughs> all right, uh, we're gonna have to move to something a little stronger than solder, so I'll just get this stuff all off myself and uh, I'll be right back. Man, I feel like a baked potato. <laughs> all right, this is called brazing, because you do it with brass. If you did it with copper, I guess you'd call it crazing. <laughs> did it with nitroglycerin, call an ambulance. <laughs> and all you gotta do is add the oxygen to the flame there on the acetylene and you can get her pretty darn hot, I'll tell you. Now, I don't have real brass, that's expensive, so I'm just gonna use a coat hanger. Should be okay. <laughs> and what you do is you just get this so hot, you don't even need any flux with this, you know. This gets really warm, you just lay the brass and the bronze right in there, or the coat hanger, as I say. And the beauty of this stuff is, uh, you, can, you know, the hot, it's so hot, you can use it for cutting metal pipes or Metal plates or metal girders, even. <laughs> or that. <laughs> well, we're getting pretty serious now. This is what they call an arc welder, which is sort of like controlled lightning, except this baby strikes twice in the same place. <laughs> Come to think of it, I've seen welders strike in the same place for the last 30 years. <laughs> now, the way this works is uh, you take a well, clip like this, you clip that right onto your work. That's sort of like your ground wire. And then the other unit, uh, kind of an odd looking thing, you take that and you stick the rod in the end there. And the way she works is uh, you don't use a flame or anything. It's just this rod touches the work and that closes the circuit and that does your welding for you. The only problem is she's pretty bright and can hurt your eyes. So for safety's sake, and you know me, safety forced, uh, <laughs> for, for safety's sake, we're gonna put the mask on. Oh boy, hang on a minute there. <sighs> wow. There, hang on a little. Uh, all right, now, you, you can't always see when you, know, when you do this, but what you do is you just touch the, the rod to the work and the spark will, will let you know what you're doing. Oh. 
There we go. Solid as a rock. <laughs> All right, now I may have welded some of my tools and various workshop collectibles to the unit, but look at the bright side. I now have a burglar-proof environment. <laughs> and I've also welded my wedding ring to my belt buckle, which is kind of poetic. <laughs> but remember, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Everybody enjoys seeing a guy being chased by a moose. Stay tuned. Guard Hartman here. Animal control. Get in here, Red. All right, guys. Wow. What happened? Stand a little too close to the dart team, did you? Oh, I wish. No, I was pecked by seagulls. Wow. I'll tell you, Red, that is it for me in outdoor restaurants. <laughs> all right, do you have a feature for us at all today, Gert? Hmm? A feature? <laughs> oh, 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 yes, 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 yes. All right, today, Red, we're going to be talking about how to get rid of something a little bit larger than we usually talk about. All right. A moose. Oh, sure, with a shotgun, yeah. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that, Red. No. All right, fine. No. What you want to do, say, 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 you, got, say you got a moose hanging around your house. Mm -hmm. Well, what you want to do is get yourself a can of moose musk. Moose musk. Moose musk. All right. Now, to a male moose, this is um, uh -huh. uh, very, very pleasant, uh, very, um, well, it's uh, very, uh, very, very attractive. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> now, you take the moose musk, you take it deep, deep into the woods. Oh, yeah. And you take the top off. Oh, boy. Now, oh, boy, look at that, huh? Uh -huh. Now, you see? Now, this uh, will attract the moose deep into the woods. Yeah. Of course, uh, boy, that's, uh, that's a heck of a lot of uh, moose musk there. Oh, uh, man, there's yeah. enough hormones oh, there to start a lift bridge, I say. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right there. Oh, oh. Well, uh, of course, you don't need to use anywhere near this amount of moose musk. A tiny, tiny little bit will do. Uh, boy, that much uh, moose musk, I think that, that would probably attract... Uh, Looks like about 25 to 30 to me. Yeah, probably, I'd say probably at least 25 to 30. Uh, of course, that much moose musk is going to drive a moose absolutely crazy. A sensory overload, low, low. Oh, boy. Another super day. Run, Harold! Don't you pass me, Harold! <laughs> Man, this thing binds. <laughs> well, I've decided the best way to make my vertical grandstand affordable to everybody is to have three ticket prices. Oh, like, 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 uh, reds, golds, and blues? Yeah, sort of. Pop, wine, and beer. <laughs> now, the pop ticket is 10 bucks. You get up 10 feet sitting on a wooden plank like this. The wine ticket, that's uh, 20 bucks. You're 30 feet higher sitting in a lawn chair with a rope seat belt. I got about 40 of these already duct taped up there. So I, I guess beer tickets being the best? Harold, beer tickets are always the best. Guys, I will hear animal control. Reminding you, don't feed bears when they're in heat. And of course, vice versa. <laughs> Welcome to the expert portion of the show. And on this week's expert portion of the show, we have experts, my Uncle Red and his good friend, Winston Rothschild. <laughs> Letter, first letter goes as follows. Uh, dear experts, my guidance counselor says that the average person will hold down five or six jobs in their life. Does that sound right to you? You know, you know something? I, I don't look at it that way. Oh. I don't look at it as jobs. No, not at all. I look at it as filling your life with profitable activity. You know, as the great Anthony Anthony once said, if you're looking for self-help, you gotta help yourself. <laughs> Well worth 90 bucks for that tidbit, I would say. <laughs> well, no, no, see, I, I think what he meant by that was uh, you got to add up the amount of hours in a day that you could be working. So what is that, what, 20? 20. Yeah. <laughs> Something's out of whack there, either your math or your priorities. Something's off the wrong there. No, no, see, and then what you do is you multiply that by the number of years from when you left school till when you retire, right? So right. how old were you when you left school? 20. <laughs> you went past high school. Oh, yeah, I went past it on the way to the lodge. <laughs> okay, so that's so 45 years yeah, times 20, 20 hours. hours a day. All right, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time. Oh, easily. A lot easily of time. A lot that's what I got. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. And see, the thing is, you could be making money with that time. 
Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you see, like, take me, for instance. I mean, you know, I am running a very successful sewage and septic sucking business. Yeah. And I have something on the side. Well, you might want to see a doctor about that. <laughs> Red, the way I see it is, you know, I'm in that truck all day long, right? Yeah. Okay. So I could be doing a lot more with my time than just simply sucking out septic tanks. I suppose, yeah. So, I've now got a pizza delivery service. <laughs> and a taxi service. And a courier service. If it's not on your desk by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, it's free guaranteed. Wow. A lot of courier companies can't guarantee that. No, no, that's my pizza delivery guarantee. <laughs> Here's a handyman hint. When you got a piece of wood that's just a little bit too long, you can shorten it using one of these wood planes. <laughs> Makes it smoother, too. Remember, any tool can be the right tool. <laughs> well, as previously warned, Bill is going to be fooling around with rockets today. He's a little bit bigger one there, and I'm going to be his assistant. So many times you get a scientist and they have an assistant, and I'm going to do what any normal, sane assistant would do, basically get the heck out of there. <laughs> Bill's got her all wired up, and the way you ignite these, almost like, a, almost like an explosive charge. Uh, it's an electrical, there's an electrical unit in there. When you plunge down, the electricity uh, goes through the wire. But apparently what I didn't realize is that it even... Yeah, it even goes through when you pull up on that. But So I checked that out. There you go. There you go, Bill. I did that for you. You're welcome. So Bill looks that up. And, uh, now, maybe this is an assistant's job. I don't know. But none of us noticed that there was uh, clothing, you know, the laundry. I think the scientist is the one who let us down there. And this, this, was, uh, this was an unfortunate turn of events there. But uh, on the bright side, these are the hot new fashions out of Possum Lodge. <laughs> wow. All right. Bill's got a bigger grind. I'm doing the assistant thing to the T now. Clear the area. Get out of there. Get in behind there. But you know, you know what happens? The curiosity. See? Can't help it. Can't help it. Look. <laughs> now, Bill did not tell me exactly what he had in mind here. So when the rocket hooked around his uh, ankle, I didn't know whether to mention it or not. Plus, I hadn't noticed it. So that really took away some of the choices. And uh, this was unfortunate here because as he lay down and with him uh, juxtaposing his legs around for juxtaposition, he ended up putting the rocket in an uncomfortable place and then really kind of wedging it in there. And was just, he had the double seam coveralls on. So really, cut. now I don't know whether this is his plan or whether this is going wrong. I mean, is this what he wants or is this a mistake? Um, I'm thinking it's a mistake at this point. It could be wrong. So I get there, clear the seams, and. Uh, now what I realize is this is nothing to do with rockets. This is part of Bill's aerobic exercise program. He looks pretty aired out, doesn't he? Those cramps will go away in a while, but you'll never go back to normal. Stay tuned while Harold drops in. Well, this is going to be a great day. The weather's going to be perfect for the boat race. Tickets have been selling like mad, and here's the best news of all. Harold has agreed to operate the concession stand. Right, Harold? so happy when they invented pantyhose. <laughs> well, you think my uncle would at least give me a free ticket? Well, Harold, you are getting in free. I just attached a few conditions to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, but where are you going to be during the festivities off counting your money somewhere? Well, no, 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 no. As facility manager of the Possum Lake Vertical Grandstand, I thought it was only right that I would take the box off my old pickup truck and weld that to the top of the tower. <laughs> your own private box? <laughs> Harold? You haven't lived to experience the carnage of a powerboat race from 130 feet. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm going to be dangling from this cable looking like Spider-Man on a coffee break. I was thinking more dope on a rope. <laughs> well, by gosh, now you've gone and done it. You said the one thing that always gets us men into trouble. You had to be a big shot, didn't you? Doing that little job around the house, she very kindly offered some advice. She probably even offered to lend you a hand. And you said, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. Men never know what they're doing. Why draw attention to it? Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's only going to check up on you, see if you've done it right. OK, first thing you got to do, you got to get yourself all alone there, no witnesses around. Mm. Second, if there's any instructions, you got to read them. Now, 
I know you don't read instructions, but there's just no room for error this time. <laughs> if you got no instructions, then, well, I guess you could have a buddy come over or hire a professional to do the job for you. But what good would that do? It's only gonna blow your cover. All right, if you're really stuck, here's what you gotta do. You gotta call her dad and ask him to come over and help you. <laughs> the most useless human being on the planet. <laughs> he won't know what to do, but he'll do anything for his little girl. <laughs> and he'll probably wreck everything in the process. <laughs> exactly what you want him to do. That's right, he can take the heat for messing up. You can take the glory for admitting that you needed help. She'll love you for it! <laughs> Remember, do exactly what we said here. Trust us, we know what we're doing. advise any lodge members out, out there. Don't be too hasty getting into the vertical grandstand business, all right? You should also warn them to check weather conditions before they go climbing any transformer towers. <laughs> Someone left the radio on somewhere? <laughs> I, I just couldn't say no to them, Harold. You know, they were, they were so anxious to get up that tower and watch the boat races. Not half as anxious as they were to get down when that lightning started. <laughs> I'll tell you, lightning is fast. <laughs> The last time I buy an expensive ticket, it took me forever. I was the last one to get off the darn thing. Well, I was climbing as fast as I could. Why didn't you use the winchie to get down? Well, the first lightning bolt fused the motor. <laughs> Second one fried my popcorn and thawed the freezies. <laughs> I hear that radio again. <laughs> you want to know the traffic report at all? <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, though, you know, all that taken into consideration, it was, it was a beautiful sight. And I've seen a blue flame before, but never that close to my face. <laughs> I except once at a stag. <laughs> Meeting time. All right, Harold, you go ahead. Oh, hey, Mel's doing the sports, too. <laughs> yeah, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I... I've had a close encounter with raw energy, and I was hoping to share some of that with you tonight, unless, of course, I'm grounded. <laughs> the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Boston Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Yes, someone stole a banana seed out of my car and I would like it back right away.